All right, guys, so I want to show you the next step for this garden bed. It has been a couple days. I've been working on the front yard, so it's been a couple days since I've, uh, you know, kind of let this dry really good. It hasn't rained or anything like that. No fog or anything, so everything's real dry and nice. Um, so what I did, what I, I went to the store and got some of this weed fabric. It's pretty thin, as you can see. So what I did was I doubled it up, and this is going to go cover up the holes. So the holes, you'll still be able to get air to come through them, but you won't have a bunch of mud, all the dirt falling through there. So that's why I doubled it up. Depending on the brand you get, what kind you get, you may um, you may only need to use one row. I know there's some thicker ones that I that I use for landscaping underneath mulch and stuff. This stuff is too thin. I, I usually don't use it. I usually use a thicker kind, but uh, for this project itself, this one works great. I used uh, the staples. You can use nails if you want, or staples. You can see right there. I would recommend. So now that you put a hole in the wood and you pretty much punctured this stuff that you put in there, what you want to do is you want to either, if you have some extra um, of the uh, sealant, this white stuff, you can put that on there, put a nice glob on there. So you'll kind of plug up those holes. I'm, I have some extra caulking, so I'm going to go ahead and use that and just plug up each one of these just to cover it up. And really you don't need to if you don't want to you don't have to nail these down or anything like that but it does help especially if you're going to be digging in here and planting plants and moving soil around and stuff like that it's a good idea to keep this in there so you have one hole here you have another hole right here and i just did it on every spot and uh so the next the next thing to do is i'm going to fill it up about halfway full of soil we're going to get some plants and then once I get the plants in there, then I'm going to go ahead and start running the drip to each one of the plants. Uh, this is the staple gun that I use. This is a great staple gun. I'd highly re recommend this. The reason why I wanted this is because it can do, as it says, a multi-tacker. It does multiple sizes and types of uh, uh, staples and, and small nails depending on depending on what job you're doing. It also has an adjustable, so it'll tack in hard or it'll tack in soft. So that's always nice too. Um, the other cool thing, and you can see right here the sizes if you're interested. There's the sizes right there that it does. And I got this at Home Depot. Um, if you wanna know price, just let me know. I can get you a price on how much it costs. Otherwise, usually if you just uh, Google Home Depot, you can see it. But uh, this is the best one that they had there. So, and I've had it for a couple years now, so it's been great. I actually used the, let's see, which ones did I use? I used the 3 8 in the orange, the 3 8 9 16 for the fabric. You really don't have to go that big, but I was using those, those nails for another job. So I went ahead and just used those same ones instead of having to buy a whole bunch of nails just for this one job. So that's that. So then I got the soil over here. I have, I got potting soil instead of um, a potting mix because a potting mix, you're mixing it with other material. This, I'm just putting it straight in there. So it's usually gonna cost a little bit more because it's not a mix, it's a soil. This is about $12 a bag. And because this is only six inches deep, I'm not putting rocks at the bottom. It's not necessary because it's not gonna be that much soil. If you're gonna be going about anywhere from six inches to any deeper than that, whether it's a pot or something like that, I would put at least an inch or two inches of rocks underneath it so that it helps a little bit better for the air flow um, inside the pot or inside the planter so because again these are only six inches deep it's not necessary for me to do that then you're then you know you're gonna have the one inch rocks and then you're only gonna have like you know four inches or five inches of soil to plant and that's not much at all so I want to have as much soil as possible for planting 
So here's the stain I'm using. This is a Olympic Maximum Clear Waterproofing Sealant. And it'll still give that natural color. You can see it's a little wet. But here's the part I've done right here. And it stops right there. So this is from Lowe's. It's 16 bucks for this small can. I got the small can because I wanted to make sure it was a color. And then I'm going to need a gallon. So that's that. So I'm going to seal this up nice and clean. Maybe we got some plants here. I'm going to be planting. I want to paint the white wall. Redo, repaint the white wall. And then I'm going to um, plant right after that. So this stuff is a little bit, little bit watery. If you're gonna, you know, here I don't need to cover anything up. But if you don't want it to drip on something, definitely cover up whatever is on the ground. Make sure you get it thick enough uh, where the holes are so that you get the sealant inside the holes because that's gonna be pretty dry if you do not. And make sure to get the tops, the sides, like right here. Get enough in there, kind of push it in there. I love this wood and the um, the grain. Um, and then also you want to brush small enough so that you can get deep in there. This brush is kind of crappy. I'm actually I got two different kinds. I only bought this cheap one so that I can do a a small demo to see what it's gonna look like on the wood so since this is the one that I wanted to use I'm gonna go ahead and just keep using this brush until it starts falling apart because these brushes do tend to fall apart and after a little while they won't be able to reach inside the little cracks very well either because the bristles will come off so I got a three inch, I got a better one down there that's much longer, so it holds a little bit more paint too. Make sure you look back to make sure there's no drips or anything like that because that will show up later. And it's looking good. Yeah, look at that. All right guys, so all the plants are planted. We have here, we have the drought tolerant, which is the parrot beak. And I'll show you a flower, let's see, oh, right here. So there's the flower that it will get. It's a nice, looks like a parrot's beak. And that will be hanging down. You got one there, you have one there, you have one over here as well as two at the bottom and one on the top right there so that'll give a nice orange color and then i have multiple colors of the geraniums you got the pink ones you have red ones bright orange ones and they're just kind of a few in each box and then i have the elephant ears which are a type of um, a succulent which is these ones right here what's great about these ones is that you can actually break them off and replant them wherever you'd like. So you gotta be careful with those because they, you know, when you're when you're digging around in the soil and stuff, they'll also snap off pretty easily. But I have a couple there and then I have one up up on there and another one on this corner. So it's just these these two right here have the elephant uh, ears. And then I have the ground cover, which also will hang down the pink clover. And right next to it, right there, is the um, Dwarf Periwinkle. It is a little blue flower. So I also have, you know, they're over here on this side. I have them up there too. And they will also hang down. And where's the blue flower? There's one over here. Oh, here it is. Look, it's a nice blue flower. That'll be nice. Uh, and then up at the top, I have all blue. And then right in the center is the pink. So, that's actually pretty high, so I can't reach it. 
but it's gonna look really nice when it's hanging down. So the next thing, because this is still slightly wet because I just stained those, I'm gonna let them dry till tomorrow. And then I can flush out the drip system because I have all the, all the, all the hoses open. I wanna make sure that everything works. And then I'm gonna, I'm going to, best thing to do, what I like to do is um, just bend these edges and then you can use electrical tape works really well or at the irrigation store, Home Depot, they sell uh, little plastic clips that'll also keep those closed. So whatever you prefer, but I'll close those off and then I gotta order the lights that are gonna go underneath. So because I'm, I, the wood that I s sealed still needs to dry, I don't want to get it too wet so I'm not going to flush the drip system out yet. But I wanted to show you how the holes that I had put underneath right there with the fabric works because here you can see water dripping from underneath and it's nice and clean. Uh, you don't have a bunch of mud coming down or anything like that. You can see it's dripping there too. So it kind of feeds, gives water to the one below it as well. So you do want to watch it to make sure you don't end up, if you do a system like this, you don't end up over watering. You can also add a drain at the bottom of these so that it catches the water and then I can recycle it into maybe a bucket if you like or one of those um, you know 10 gallon barrels so that you can reuse the water but this is gonna work just fine as long as the drip is not on for too long and that's exactly why I put the drip separate from the plants in the ground get these plants I'm really excited to see how this grows I think I'd like to get some worms too, throw some worms in the soil. They can help fertilize naturally. I need to use my hand and I keep watering it until I start seeing the see now the water is starting to drip down the bottom. So this one is full. So now I can move on to the next one. <laughs> 